I'm finally getting to the point in development where I'm working on the areas that will be in the final game. So I decided that the proper thing to do before I started working on such important things is to get into the proper indie developer aesthetic. Easy. Now that I have the proper environment for enhancing the flow of my creative energy, I decided it was time to actually make stuff. For the opening scene, I planned on having essentially a character get attacked by something that's going to be important later in the game, just to uh, give the player an event early on to keep their mind on and to give some sort of goal to the story to basically figure out what's going on. Anyways, for the opening scene, I have to have a character get attacked, so I started drawing that. That was fairly simple. I'm not really going to go into details there, although this is probably one of the longest animations I've ever made at 33 frames. Unfortunately, I couldn't implement this right away because I was only set up to have one entity that is the player. So this just had to sit on my computer for a month before I could actually do anything with it. So next up was to draw the forest background because I intended for the opening scene to occur in a forest. I've historically had a very, very bad time with drawing backgrounds for games, but I think this one turned out fairly well. Next, I added that back onto the game for testing purposes, and funny enough, this is the point at which I saved the build for my patrons. If you don't know, I'm planning on this project being open source after I release it, but for the time being, it is closed source during development, and I am pre-releasing the source code to patrons. There's a link to that in the description if you're interested. Anyways, after the background was implemented, I went like a few weeks without doing anything and then I finally got around to doing things again. I went in, redid the tile set for the third or fourth time because it was bugging me again. It looks a bit better now, but I wouldn't be surprised if I redo it again later. With that done, it was finally time to start working on the four specific assets. I'm only doing a couple of them for now, I'll probably add more later to make it stand out more. but. I started with just some tall grass and some bulb vines, which are the biggest vines so far and they have a round shape at the end. The grass uses my grass system that I went over quite a few devlogs ago, and then I also used the cloth system for the vines that I went over a couple devlogs ago. I made the core shape and then just in general environment for the intro level. I'll probably modify this later in terms of shape and I'll definitely add or move around some of the more aesthetical things. I'm also missing some important landmarks that are going to be in this area that I haven't drawn yet. I'll have to get to those later. For example, the explorer that I drew at the beginning. It's supposed to be looking at something, but for the time being, it's pretty much just looking at a tree. With the core level done, I loaded it into the game with some issues. I started by spawning in the wall and using weird movement and jumping technique to glitch my way out. So I decided it's an important time to fix my spawning system and get a way to spawn into there in a more natural way. Typically, the spawn locations are determined by where you're transitioning from in terms of what level you're transitioning from, but if you're just starting the game, it doesn't have a spot to put you. So I'd set up something so that it has a spot to put you. I'm going to have to redo this later because the current setup only makes sense for the very beginning of the game and I don't have anything for resuming after saving the game and starting it back up again. With that done, it was time to move on to the actually fun part. I wanted to make an entity scripting system because in this game, I don't want the entities and the NPCs and whatnot to feel boring and like stuck in certain patterns. I want the interactions to be unique when I want them to be, instead of like just having paths for movement and a dialogue system and whatnot. I want the entities to be able to do more than that. So I created a scripting system where I can attach scripts to entities and those entities have access to modify pretty much anything in the game. And I'm actually going to be running on the intro scene off of a script that's attached to the uh, character that gets attacked at the beginning. The scripting system's pretty simple. I just have a folder full of scripts for entities. I've got a base script, which is just a base outline of what the script class should look like. And then I have other scripts that will inherit from that and modify those functions. 
In the case of the match function, that's the function that's used to determine if a script should be applied to an entity. Every time an NPC is spawned, the game will look through all the scripts and run the match functions to see if they match the entity. And if they do, it'll attach that script to the entity and it'll call the update function every frame. It'll also pass the entity itself and the game object to the update function, which gives the update function direct access to the specific entity it's attached to, along with direct access to the entire game itself, so I can do pretty much anything I want. With that working, I decided it was time to work on a camera system because the intro scene is going to have camera movement. It's not going to initially focus on the player. There's a lot of aspects to this camera system I've got here. So normally, the position of the terrain relative to what you're looking at, so essentially what people normally interpret as the camera position is something I just call scroll. And I already had that as attached to my level class. So I set up the camera to essentially have a scroll attribute that points to the level's scroll attribute. So I can modify it from the camera. And if you don't know already, Python essentially has pointers for everything that is an object, which includes lists and dictionaries. So I use that for my camera position, essentially. I also added some attributes for the zoom of the camera. However, some things are not implemented yet since I don't need them. The most important part of my camera system is that I have options for the camera to follow the player or do other things, and I can control it by locking or unlocking the camera. And I have a function for setting special motion based on Bezier curves, which I covered in one of my earlier devlogs. But I can set motion based on Bezier curves and a duration. I can specify a target and the camera will move towards that target in the pattern of the Bezier curve. So I can make it like bounce back and fling towards the target. For the intro scene, I just decided to use a smoother transition, but I can definitely do crazier things like I have for the item indicators. It's overall just a really convenient system to point the camera where I want. When I'm done, I can unlock the camera and the camera will go back to the player. Alternatively, I can set the motion of the camera to go towards the player's position, but it's easier to just unlock it and let it go back on its own. With the camera implemented, there was only one thing left to be able to start scripting the intro scene. I needed some way to track the progress in the game so that I can track where I am in terms of scenes that are supposed to be occurring and things like quests. This was another thing where I didn't want to have a strict pattern for how things should work, so I decided to make it a script itself rather than a text file or something like that. I've essentially just got a dictionary with what are basically quest lines with the stages in those quest lines and the timer since that stage started. I'll probably add other attributes to keep track of what's going on with those types of things, but for the time being this is enough. With that done, I could finally start working on the script for the intro scene. This is a very basic implementation of it. I plan to add more stuff later, but this gets the core stuff down. Under the update functionality for the entity that's going to be attacked, I have it checked to see if we're in the right stage of the core quest line and check to make sure that well, the time since that stage has started is at the right point, and then if that's the case, I set the camera motion towards the entity that will be attacked, which in this case is the entity that the script is attached to. I set a duration of 200, which is 200 frames until the camera reaches its desired location, and I set a zoom level of 2. At the same time, I also lock the player's input at that point. After the camera has been looking at the entity for a little bit, I activate the attacked animation on the entity. I give it some time, and then I unlock the camera and allow it to fall back to the player. And then I advance the core quest line so that it's no longer in that stage. So now the entity is just sitting there dead so the player can walk up to it if they want. Anyways, that's pretty much it for what I've done so far. Hopefully I'll get more into making the parts that are actually going to be in the game soon. I want to work on this opening cutscene more. I need more effects to demonstrate what's going on. I have tons of visual effects I want to do still, but I'll have to get to this later. Anyways, I've got a Patreon now, so if you're interested in the source code to this project and you don't want to wait like two years for me to release it, 
I do release it to my patrons, so you can go and uh, become a patron. Also, I've got to do a quick shout out to my current potato tier patrons, which consist of Kyle and Jim Smith. I also have a Discord community for pretty much anyone that's interested in my stuff, or wants a community for Python related game development, or just game development in general, although there's mostly Python related stuff in there. There's a link to that on screen and in the description. That's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, I'll see you guys later.